everyone, and welcome to another CMCP pre-recorded activity video. My name is Allie, and my pronouns are she and her. Today, I'll be showing you a few fun math activities inspired by the mitten. But before we get started with our activities, let's read our story and figure out what it's all about. The Mitten, a Ukrainian folktale adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. Once there was a child named Nikki who wanted new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, their grandmother Baba did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens. And finally, Baba made them. After she finished, she said, When you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound. But then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went. And it wasn't long until one of their new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so the mole decided to stay. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. The rabbit stopped for a moment to admire the winter coat. It was then that the rabbit saw the mitten and wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was enough room for the both of them. But when the mole saw the rabbit's big kickers, it moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, the hedgehog decided to move into the mitten to get warm. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled. But not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. Then the owl decided to move in also. The mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. Grumble, 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 grumble. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let the owl in. Up through the snow appeared a badger. The badger eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left. But when they saw the badger's diggers, they gave the badger the thumb. It started to snow, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made the fox feel drowsy. The fox poked their muzzle in when the mole and the rabbit and the hedgehog and the owl and the badger saw the fox's shiny teeth. They gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. The bear spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, 
the bear began to nose their way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged too many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. The meadow mouse wriggled into the one space left and made themselves comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ah, 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 choo! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all different directions. On their way home, Nikki saw a white shape in the distance. <gasps> it was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As Nikki ran to catch the snow white mitten, they saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if Nikki was safe and sound, and then she saw that they still had their new mittens. The end. For our first activity, we'll be making some story stones. Here's what you'll need for those. In order to make your storytelling rocks, you will need eight river rocks, some Mod Podge and a paintbrush, or any water-based sealer and glue finish. And finally, printouts of the animals in our story. I've just drawn some here on some regular old white paper, but you can either print them out or paint them onto your rocks. You decide. First, I'm going to lay down a cloth so that I don't make a big old mess. Next, I'll take my Mod Podge and my paintbrush and paint a fine layer onto my rocks. Next, I'll put on my first animal friend and cover the whole thing with Mod Podge, sealing the paper onto the rock. Next, I'll do the same for all my other rocks. While you wait for your animals to dry, scrounge around the house to see if you can find some mittens. Here, I've got some knit mittens that aren't white, but they'll do the trick. Or, some white knit socks. Those will do fine as well. Once your storytelling rocks are nice and dry, they'll have a smooth and glossy finish. You can use your sock or your mitten to have your child retell the story using their own words. Retelling the story using props can help your child with their memory and vocabulary skills. To extend this activity and make it just a little bit more challenging, you can put together a sheet of paper numbered with the numbers one through eight. Take your paper with all of the numbers and take your book. 
We're going to figure out which animal went into the mitten first. So here's Bubba making the, the mittens. Oh, I see the first animal. It's the mole. Which one is the mole? Ah, there they are. The mole was number one. Let's find out who came next. Oh, I see who came next. It's the rabbit. Let's find our rabbit. There they are. The rabbit came second. Two more animals left. Who came next? Hmm. Next came the bear. <gasps> Where's our bear? Is this the bear? No, that's a little mouse. Here's our bear. Bear is number seven. That means our mouse is the last one. Let's check to make sure. <gasps> yep, it's the mouse. The mouse is the last one. Eight. The end. This activity is great in helping your child understand the order of numbers. Now for our next activity, I cut up a bunch of shapes of mittens out of different colored felt and the shape of a snowball in some white felt. If you haven't got felt in your house though, don't worry about it. You could just use some construction paper. Let me show you what we're gonna need these for. This little snowball is very sneaky. It likes to hide behind mittens. We're going to collect all of our mittens and place our snowball behind one of them. Mix around your mittens so that nobody knows where the snowball could be hiding. Next, we're going to place our mittens onto our surface. Here, we're going to say a little chant. You can pat on your knees to keep the beat or on your surface. The chant goes a little something like this. Snowball, snowball, cold and round. Behind which mitten can you be found? Hmm, are you behind the yellow mitten? Let's take a peek. <gasps> nope. No snowball behind the yellow mitten, uh-uh. So we know that the snowball needs to be behind one of the other mittens. Should we try again? Snowball, snowball, cold and round. Behind which mitten can you be found? Hmm, how about behind the blue mitten? Let's take a look. Are you? No, not behind the blue mitten and not behind the yellow mitten. Hmm, should we try one more time? Snowball, snowball, cold and round. Behind which mitten can you be found? Hmm, I think maybe this time we'll try the red mitten. Let's see, are you here? <gasps> there you are, snowball. We found our snowball using our math skills. We were able to keep track of which mittens the snowball was not behind and by process of elimination, 
we knew that it had to be either behind the red, the pink, or the green. Well, thank you all so much for joining me, and I hope I gave you some fun ideas. Until next time, bye!